Good morning and welcome to All Souls Interfaith Gathering for our Music and Spirit service on Sunday, November the 15th. We had planned to be with you here today, but we're so glad that you're joining us online since we're unable to be physically present with one another today. We'd like to extend a special welcome this morning to our musicians. We have back with us Mary McGinnis. Mary is an insightful songwriter who's inspired by folk tales, rock and roll, jazz, and poetry. Also with us today is Gus Ziesing, and Gus, as you've already seen, is an accomplished accordionist. He also plays the clarinet and saxophone and is a sound engineer. So thank you both for being with us here today. Just a few announcements about things coming up this week here at All Souls. Our theme for this month is Gathering Gratitude. And there are several opportunities that you have to share with others during this month. First, we have a winter outerwear drive. We're collecting coats and mittens and scarves, anything to help people stay warm during the winter months. And we're also collecting food for the Shelburne Food Shelf for a Thanksgiving food drive. As you drive up to the All Souls building on our front porch, there are two bins, one for the outerwear drive and one for the food drive. So please stop by during office hours, Tuesday through Friday, and we will most gratefully receive your donations. We also want to let you know that normally at this time of the year, we would engage in the winter wish tree to buy gifts for students at the Shelburne Community School. But this year, to simplify things, we are collecting donations for the Angel Fund at Shelburne Community School to help families in need in that community. Uh, you can click online to make a donation to the Angel Fund or simply send a check here to All Souls. Other events happening this week, our Search for Meaning group is gathering on Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. The group is currently reading and discussing the book, See No Stranger. And you're welcome even if you haven't participated before. On Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., we're having a virtual community forum to take our Blueprint 2020 to the next stage. We'll be talking about how the recent Argosy grant and agreements will help us to reach our goals in Blueprint 2020 and how you can be involved. So check online. There's a link to join us on Zoom on Wednesday evening at 7. And our men's group meets on Thursday evening at 6 o'clock p.m. And Scott Delman will be leading the group this week. Next week at 9 a.m., our meditation will meet online on Zoom with a special focus on our spiritual teachers. And we'll hear from a couple of members of our meditation community about teachers who've made a special difference in their lives. And we also want to thank all of you who are volunteering here at All Souls. I know some of you were here this week weeding in the sacred earth wheel. Thank you for that. I want to thank Dan York for being with us here today to provide expert technical support for our live streaming. So thank you to all of you who give of your time to our community. Our opening words this morning come from Parker Palmer, and I'd like to invite you to join me in a spirit of contemplation as we hear these words. Parker was given an honorary doctorate by Naropa University in Colorado, and this is a part of his address on that occasion. If you hold a healthy awareness of your own mortality, your eyes will be opened to the grandeur and glory of life. And that will evoke hope, generosity, and gratitude. If the unexamined life is not worth living, 
it's equally true that the unlived life is not worth examining. And then Parker went on to quote Diane Ackerman, the great affair, the love affair with life is to live as variously as possible, to groom one's curiosity like a high-spirited thoroughbred, climb aboard and gallop over the thick sun-struck hills every day. Where there is no risk, the emotional terrain is flat and unyielding, and despite all its dimensions, valleys, pinnacles, and detours, life will seem to have none of its magnificent geography, only a length. Life began in mystery, and it will end in mystery. But what a savage and beautiful country lies in between. So the first song I did, or we did, uh, Gus and I, is a song I wrote, The World's Gone Crazy, and it was about a dream I had of my great aunt, Margaret, who was a fiddler, and she, she was around sort of many decades ago, uh, but it seemed timeless. And this next song is also written about a family member, my great grandfather, uh, again, comes from a dream, so I'm very grateful for my family. And it's followed by a Scottish tune called Green Lottie. And thank you for listening. so long they're unable to see we'll meet them here in the summer sun by the western shore where birds fly
So Reverend Don's going to light our chalice, and I just want to thank you for that song. It's so beautiful to think of the Spirit Hall. We're back in the sanctuary. I can't help but think of the gratitude the sanctuary feels for being pumped with music and prayer again, and also the blessing of being outside more and getting to be with so many extra blessings. So we light this chalice all about lighting our path and finding the blessings in these times, finding the blessings of being outdoors and coming together and light to light the way and blessings along the path. Here's another one in gratitude to my family and my son's family. Um, and uh, it's called Wild Branches Bend. <laughs> Yeah. 
Thank you, Mary and Gus. I'm very grateful for the joy that your music is bringing me this morning, and I know to many others as well. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. You bet. This is the month about thinking of gathering gratitude. And one of the things that I have been grateful for during the pandemic is the ability to go outside in such a beautiful place. And all across Vermont, we've seen record numbers of people on the trails and in the parks. That's not true just here in Vermont, it's true across the country, as our national parks have been seeing record numbers of visitors as well. And if you've had the good fortune to visit the national parks, you know how inspiring they can be. So I thought this morning I would begin with some comments from people who have visited national parks. Here's one from a visitor to the Grand Canyon. Well, whoopity do, Grand Canyon. You are a giant hole in the ground. You were caused by erosion. Jeesh, can you say overrated? Or how about this one from Yellowstone? The one thing that makes this place so different from other parks is the geysers, but I was extremely underwhelmed. They look so much better in the pictures. Honestly, save yourself some money and boil some water at home. And here's how another visitor reacted to Yosemite. By the way, the park shuts off some of the waterfalls after midsummer. This is probably due to dwindling Park Service budgets. Also, there are bears in Yosemite, and they practice breaking into cars. Stay away from this place. And finally, here's what a visitor said about Rocky Mountain National Park. Way overrated. First, there's wildlife everywhere, and who wants to run into a moose on the trail? Plus, there's not a single Starbucks on any of the trailheads. Finally, too many snow-capped mountains. I like to see the horizon at all times. It brings me comfort. Well, you may have noticed that some people like to complain about just about everything, and it seems to be their primary way of reacting to the world. But the truth is that all of us complain at some time. Pastor Will Bowen, a number of years ago, challenged his congregation to what's called the 21-day the complaint-free challenge. And Will passed out rubber bracelets to his congregation, and he suggested that any time they find themselves complaining about something, they remove the rubber bracelet and move it to the other hand with the goal of being able to go 21 days without complaining. And he said that it takes many people two to three weeks to get past the first few days because complaining is so ingrained into how we react to life. Well, why is this a problem? I mean, after all, isn't it healthy to vent about things sometimes? Aren't complaints necessary to correct some situations? Sure, up to a point, but we often make complaints the focus of our lives, and that's a focus that we don't want. Because when we focus on something negative, we often begin to experience more of it. So today we're going to be thinking about the practice of gratitude and why it's so important to finding happiness and fulfillment in our lives. Because when we know what we appreciate in our lives, we know who we are and what matters to us. A researcher from the University of Miami and another from uh, Cal State uh, Davis did a study back in 2003 called Counting Your Blessings Versus Burdens. 
And they had two control groups, one that went through an exercise of counting their blessings on a daily basis, and the other kept a running tally of their burdens or their complaints. And they found that those who cultivated an ex- a, a, a deeper understanding of gratitude had appreciable differences in their levels of well-being. They felt happier and they were more fulfilled. And many other research studies have found that gratitude is linked to new and lasting relationships because we're mo- more open to meeting people, better health, fewer aches and pains, and more progress toward our own personal goals. So during this month of gathering gratitude, how can we connect more deeply to our feelings of appreciation? Lisa Firestone, who's the Director of Research and Education at the Glendon Association, suggests several approaches. And the first is to change the channel on your inner critic. Have you ever heard your inner critic speaking to you? We can begin to feel more grateful when we quiet those negative thoughts that turn us both against ourselves as well as against others. Now, I don't know about you, but my inner critic, he sounds a lot like one of those angry AM radio show hosts, you know, the kind who says, everything is messed up, nothing is going right. That's exactly what my inner critic sounds like. He's telling me I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not lovable enough. He says things to me that I would never say to an enemy. But you know, I've learned that we can change the channel. I don't have to listen to that negativity. And it does take some practice, but you can change the channel to hear assurances that you are lovable. You are enough. You are treasured. So it's easy to see how the inner critic can interfere with our feelings of gratitude. After all, when we listen to that, it takes us out of the present and it keeps us entirely in our heads and out of our heart, distorting how we see the world. And when we're in this state, we're often unavailable to see other people or to hear them at a deep level. But when we change the channel, when we tune in to the inner encourager, we're able to see the world around us in a much more compassionate way. We begin to appreciate the good in our lives and in ourselves and in others. And we can remember that we have the right to value and to pursue those things that give us meaning. So we can all learn to change the channel, and listen to the inner encourager within us. A second approach to cultivating more appreciation, more gratitude in our lives, is to practice mindfulness. I'd like to share a quote from psychologist and meditation leader Jack Kornfield. Jack says this, The cultivation of mindfulness really allows us to become present for our own body, for the person in front of us, for the life we've been given. And out of that grows, quite naturally, the spirit of gratitude. Here's another quote from John Kabat-Zinn, who describes mindfulness as paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non-judgmentally, as if your life depended on it. 
he recommends mindfulness as a way of connecting with your life, a way that doesn't involve a lot of energy, but rather a kind of cultivating attention in a particular way. Because when we practice mindfulness, we allow our thoughts and our feelings to move through us without taking over and getting us lost. And mindfulness enables us to stay more connected with people and to wake up to what we've been missing. So building a mindfulness practice involves cultivating an awareness of all of our perceptions and noticing them without judgment. Last week, we were here together on the back lawn for a walking meditation. Reverend Kim Marie led a beautiful meditation, and we walked in silence for 30 minutes. And she encouraged us as we walked to become mindful about what was happening in our bodies, what was happening around us in nature, And as I walked along, I began to notice a twinge of pain in my ankle. Now, I could have grabbed onto that idea. I could have judged it. I could have created a whole story in my head about, that must be a pulled muscle. Do you need to go see the doctor, Don? But Per Kim Marie's suggestion, I stayed with it. I noticed the pain. I noticed the thought without judgment and let them go. When I reached the same spot on our next circuit around, I noticed the pain was not there. And again, I noticed that awareness without judgment, just letting it go. And so that's what a mindfulness practice involves, not just during formal meditation sessions, but in every moment of our lives. Finally, another way that we can cultivate a deeper sense of gratitude in our lives is to awaken a sense of wonder because gratitude can help us become much more in touch with ourselves. Our senses are awakened and we can become more aware of what we hear, what we see, what we feel, what we smell. And we'll be better equipped to experience an essential component of a fulfilling life, and that is awe, wonder. Kirk Schneider wrote a book called Awakening to Awe, and he says this, Awe is the sense of amazement, humility, and wonder before the very mystery of life. Awe is not just a cheap thrill or a stunned helplessness. It's an appreciation for the whole of life, the fragile, as well as the exalting. Awe inspires us to see through the pettiness of life and connect us to the grand picture, the great adventure. And this adventure has a remarkable potential to lift us up, to heal us, and to give our lives meaning. When we become aware of our own experience, the things outside of ourselves and our dependence on them, we experience humility and awe. We wake up to a sense of wonder about the everyday things that we tend to overlook, and we open our hearts to being connected and feeling gratitude for all of the miracles in our midst. Since daylight savings time ended, the the sun is setting pretty early around here. And so when I was leaving the office here at All Souls earlier this week, uh, the sunset was well in progress. And 
I was walking to my car when the sunset grabbed me. The vibrancy of the colors, the silence of the landscape, the sheer beauty of what my eyes and ears were taking in. And I had to stop. I had to stop and savor it, to experience awe. Jack Cornfield says this, we have the privilege of the lavender color at sunset, the taste of a tangerine in our mouth, and the almost unbearable beauty of life around us, along with its troubles, so we can either be lost in a smaller state of consciousness, what in Buddhist psychology is called the body of fear, which brings suffering to us and to others, or we can bring the quality of love and appreciation, which I would call gratitude to life. So as we head into this new week with its uncertainty about the virus, about politics, and our own personal challenges, may we remember to change the channel on that inner critic, to practice mindfulness and cultivate a sense of wonder. So I'd like to conclude with just a few practical tips that I would encourage you to engage in this week. The first is, every day, watch for a moment of wonder and then linger in that experience. Allow yourself to savor awe and wonder on a daily basis. Another suggestion sometime this week to write a letter, not an email, but a letter. A letter of thanks to someone who's made a difference in your life. And to share that letter with the person. I would also encourage you to think whether you eat alone or with others. As you begin the meal to express gratitude. It might be gratitude to the person who cooked it might be gratitude to the divine, might be gratitude to the farmers who grew our food. But just take a moment to express gratitude. And then finally, if you're feeling up to it, find a sturdy rubber band and put it on your wrist and try the complaint-free challenge. Whenever you find yourself complaining, just take it off and move it to your other wrist and start over, cultivating a deep sense of gratitude that leads to wonderful well-being. May it be so.
young man I didn't know I can't take him down this road and the night's still falling and I get close I don't Thank you so much for that, that moment of grace. It's our time for prayers and meditation, so I just want to encourage anyone to get into a comfortable seat or light a candle if they want to. I loved all that you spoke of, Don. I was just thinking about this concept about complaining and how often we can find people in our lives that complain or even see ourselves when we're in that state. Um, take a moment to close your eyes and tune in.
We're going to start off actually thinking of someone that's challenging in our lives that maybe does complain, because often we have these people, and it even could be ourself. So if you can imagine someone in your life that maybe you have a hard time with, that seems not to live with the power of gratitude, Don said that when we tune in, we can change the channel. So we're actually going to send a prayer out and change the channel for them. We're going to send a prayer to these folks in our lives. I loved what Don said. He said that you are loved and you are enough. So if we can just take a moment to come into our hearts so we can foster up our own love And when you get some, you can send it out to someone who needs it, someone who you may hear. Not only in your own system. And then I'm just going to say those words again. You're going to let that into yourself. So just be with this. Let this enter your heart. Let this enter your soul. Let this enter your mind. You are loved. You are enough. You are loved. You are enough. You are loved. You are enough. You are always loved. You are always enough. Take a moment just to breathe the words in. You are loved. You are enough. May these words reach everyone and everything. And let's just take a moment to also conjure up gratitude since this is all about the power of gratitude let's take a moment to think of something that we just love and we're so grateful for so take a moment to bring that into your heart and soul imagine it let it fill your body breathe it in And foster all the feelings that it brings, all the joy in your heart, all that it brings. Gather all of that energy. Could be something you love to do. It could be something out in nature. In the last part of our prayer, I'm going to ask you to think of a person you'd like to write a letter to, like Don mentioned. Maybe we could write a letter of gratitude. So think of who that person might be. Start that process. And we can start by just sending them the feelings that we get from the gratitude of what we love. Just send them a little bit of that as a pre-letter, as a pre-prayer letter. Send that over to them. 
offering thanks both for things in your life that you love and also for people that you're grateful for. I'm going to end with our vision statement, which is we envision a just and peaceful and loving world, respectful of differences and united by common humanity, in which people live purposeful lives in harmony with each other, with other creatures, and the earth itself. There's so much to be grateful for. Thank you. One of the things that I'm grateful for about the All Souls community is your tremendous generosity. We come now to the time of our offering, and so we'll be passing the electronic offering plate. You can give online on our website. Of course, you can send checks here to All Souls. I just want to mention that we understand that during these unprecedented days, many are experiencing financial challenges. And so we never want to put any pressure on you to give beyond what you're able. We would mention that many of the revenue sources that we depend on are down this year. So whatever you can give is deeply, deeply appreciated to help us carry forward the work of all souls. We always like each week to bless the gifts that come in, and so we'll do so now. Divine love, as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I give. so much, John and Kim. It's been our pleasure. Thank you, Gus Zizin, for being with me today. Thank you, Mary McGinnis. <laughs> and we've been playing original tunes, but this last tune is um, a freedom song from the Civil Rights Movement, and it's public domain, and um, it's just wonderful. It's kind of my version. Uh, and uh, if you're at home, please dance. Please sing along, please clap. Um, It's called Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn You Around. Keep on walking, keep on talking, marching up the beat.
Thank you so much, Mary and Gus. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Don. I'm so grateful. Our closing words are uh, by, it's an Apache prayer, and I just want to remind everyone the sanctuary is built on Abenaki land, so when you look out and you see this beauty, we give thanks to all that have tended it, all that have lived it before. So if you want to, you can stand up and do this. This is an embodied prayer as well. Or you can sit and do it. <laughs> there's, there's a version you can sit to, but you're going to turn around. You say, looking behind, I am filled with gratitude. And then face forward, looking forward, I am filled with vision. And then we're going to look up and say, looking upward, I am filled with strength. And then you put your hands on your heart and say, looking within, I discover peace. So I hope you all have an amazing week filled with peace and gratitude and love. And please join us next week and stay tuned for all the different, I guess, messages and updates on whatever's going to be happening with our services here. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm.